Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. So glad that you can join us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we'll be having a conversation with Dr. Elizabeth Garner. She's joining us here as Chief Scientific Officer for Faring Pharmaceuticals to talk about C. diff as a major health threat, its current standard of care, the reason for the recurrence of this contagious, serious, and sometimes life-threatening disease, and also a bit about a novel FDA-approved treatment that prevents recurrent C. diff infection. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Elizabeth Garner. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thanks. Looking forward to the conversation. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself briefly. Sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, um, I am the U.S. Chief Scientific Officer for Faring. I've been with the company for a year, but have been in the uh, pharmaceutical industry for about 16 years now, and prior to that was in practice as a GYN oncologist. Uh, Being the Chief Scientific Officer in the U.S. is a big job. Um, I have a fairly large team of folks uh, ranging from regulatory, uh, biometrics, um, medical affairs, all the way to safety and pharmacovigilance. So it's a very interesting uh, job. I also have the opportunity, of course, uh, to participate in R&D, research and development, and uh, looking into new products such as the one we're going to discuss today. Well, first off, what is C. diff and why is it a major health threat? So C. diff is a bacterial infection. It's very serious, a potentially deadly disease, and in fact, it's the most common healthcare-associated infection, meaning infections that can be um, acquired in the hospital, for instance. Mm. Uh, Very contagious, and in fact, so uh, deadly, really, that the CDC has declared uh, uh, C. diff as a public health threat, as I think you already said. It causes about half a million illnesses a year, about tens of thousands of deaths in, in the U.S. alone each year. Um, what happens is C. diff bacteria enter the body through the mouth. They can be- begin uh, reproducing in the small intestine, but then when they reach the colon, they can release these tissue-damaging toxins, which are really what ultimately cause the disease. Um, C. diff occurs when uh, what we call the gut microbiome is disrupted, which we'll talk about in a minute. And in terms of the, t- uh, the symptoms that uh, are seen, severe diarrhea, fever, Uh, stomach pain, loss of appetite, nausea, and then sometimes colitis, which in fact requires surgery. Uh, The risk of getting it is higher for people who've, you know, taken antibiotics, been in a healthcare facility, have a weakened immune system, and who might be 65 years or older. So very, very important condition. Now, this is something that has a history of recurring even after adequate treatment, correct? Right, yes. And that's the big challenge here is You know, we have good antibiotics that uh, can treat the initial infection, Um, but what happens is these antibiotics, while they wipe out the very bad disease-causing bacteria, they can also wipe out what we call the gut microbiome. It's a very delicate balance of trillions of bacteria and and other uh, microbes that really protect uh, the gut against uh, infection and have other um, important uh, impacts on our health overall. Uh, but it's, it's what happens when antibiotics uh, wipe out that uh, mic, uh, microbiome, that mm-hmm. gut microbiome, that uh, infections such as C. diff can come right back in um, and uh, cause a recurrence. And it's been estimated that up to about 35% of initial C. diff infections, 35% of people will have a recurrence. So that's a large number. And then if you look at patients who've had a first recurrence, it's been estimated that up to 65% of patients may develop a subsequent recurrence. Recurrence, and when these recurrences, as these recurrences occur, um, patients get you know weaker and weaker, and so the likelihood of, of death becomes increasingly um, uh, concerning as a patient gets recurrences. As someone who's not involved in healthcare, if I'm understanding correctly, the treatment sets the stage for the recurrence. How exactly does Rebiota work to uh, reduce this re- recurrence or prevent it? So Rebiota is a what we call a microbiota suspension, right? So And it delivers live microbes, including specific bacteria such as bacteroides, which are very important for the gut microbiome. Delivers those directly to the gut where they are needed, thus helping to get the microbiome back to a healthy state. It's really prevention of the recurrence. So antibiotics are critical, Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, in particular, for the gut microbiome, they have this unfortunate side effect of causing that imbalance or dysbiosis, as we call it, of the microbiome. Is there anything that can be done uh, concerning the microbiome without this uh, 
compound in the beginning to, I guess, strengthen the microbiome, certain diet, things of that nature, so that if you do end up in the hospital, you're less likely to get C. diff. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, healthy eating, um, you know, uh, there's certain uh, dietary things, yogurt, things like that, that are believed to help with the microbiome. Ultimately, you know, it's really a, an issue of kind of having risk factors, really, um, especially, you know, taking antibiotics. So one thing I certainly talk about a lot is, you know, for patients to really use antibiotics and for doctors to prescribe antibiotics when they know they're absolutely needed. So one example is uh, patients often get treated with antibiotics when they may maybe go to the dentist for, you know, what they believe is maybe an infection, and they immediately get treated with, with antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Those folks have a higher risk, actually, because those antibiotics do the same thing as they do when you're treating C. diff. They disrupt the microbiome. So there are certain things that can be done to certainly overuse of antibiotics is one thing that can be done to help prevent. Now, there are some some basic key benefits of this compound compound obviously for both physicians and their patients but what about any um any drawbacks any any side effects um are there people who just aren't a good candidate there are very few people who are not candidates mm-hmm. um for uh, rebiota um the most common side effects are you know something that's typical of course that is administered rectally so things like stomach pain diarrhea bloating gas and nausea but we really, through the clinical trials, did not observe, you know, very serious side effects. They were mostly mm-hmm. limited to the ones I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Well, then let's uh, go over some of the benefits one more time and then give us an, uh, a website where our audience can learn more. Sure thing. So uh, a few key benefits. One, rebiota is a single-dose treatment, right? It can be minis- administered directly, sort of as we call it, where it's needed, right, mm-hmm. uh, right into the gut. It's done in minutes, um, can be done in the doctor's office. It uh, doesn't require a bowel prep, which is great. Uh, doesn't require anesthesia, colonoscopy. So it's a very sort of quick procedure that can be done. Um, important to also keep mentioning, though, it's not a bio- an antibiotic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then in terms of our website, uh, to learn more about certainly recurrent C. diff infection, and then, of course, to learn more about rebiota, um, your listeners can visit www.rebiota.com, and that's spelled R-E-B-Y-O-T-A. Dr. Garner, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Lots of good information. It was my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Elizabeth Garner. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.